Well, good evening, Sister Sandy. Welcome back good to Black Who. How you doing, darling? I'm good. Good. Very good. I love that. I love that because we know that that's a good word. Good. Look, look that's a good <laughs> word. Good. And, you know, because we know God is good. Sandy and audience, for those that are watching us on this one-on-one -on -one Bible study, I just love this format. Welcome back to BlackWhoMinistries.com, where we are Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, our weekly phone Bible study ministry. And before we get into the lessons today, because we're talking about what does your name mean, Cindy, we're going to have you to open us up in prayer. Welcome in God, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Ghost who is our comforter. And we know all three are going to be teaching you and I and the audience in another great in-depth lesson talking about what does your name mean? Sandy, open us up in prayer, please. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, we welcome you in today into our hearts and our minds. Open up the people that are going to review this video over the months and years to come, that their eyes and ears will be open, that they will hear this great word that you pour out through our mouths, and that they will want what we have, and they will want to join this great army of people that are in the last days are going to be bringing and watering seeds and allowing you to then give the increase and to allow you to have the people to hear your word, your cry, your love, that they will become the same as us. In the name of Jesus, we pray today. Amen. Woo. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Sandy, for another great prayer. We can never have too much prayer. I'm telling you, people can call me all day or I can talk all day on the phone and do Bible study all day. I love prayer because that's where the power is. God bless you for that. And thank you uh, for uh, this prayer to get us going on this lesson today. Well, Sister Sandy and audience, as we said, we're doing a wonderful series this year and we're talking about what does your name mean? And today we're going to be looking at the name Doris. That's mm -hmm. where we're going to be looking at today. So I love this part because uh, we have to understand who are we. That's what we've been learning this year. We're on lesson number 41, Sandy. Can you believe that? We only got one more to go. Wow. And all of these names, all of these women that we've been learning this, uh, this year, and Doris is number 41. And I found out that Doris is a Greek name and it means strong, like the uh, like the inherent meaning is like an ocean. I found it's like an ocean. And we know ocean and the sea is very powerful, is very strong. So with that being said, uh, Sandy, if you had to describe or define the word strong, because that's going to be the key word today we're going to be looking for in the scriptures. What is your definition of this word strong? Well, in the physical, it's someone who's really, really strong, right? They have, they lift weights and mm -hmm. they're very strong. And then it could be in your mental state that you're a really strong minded person, right? You can't be swayed. And mm -hmm. then in the spiritual side is where's your strength in the spirit? Okay. Mm -hmm. do, where's your faith? Where's your trust? Mm -hmm. You know, are, do you have salvation? You know, mm -hmm. that's, strong right mm -hmm. that's the mm -hmm. strength in which we survive in this world so that's what i got out of that it's um simple <laughs> it, it really is you got some really good ones sandy i like that uh, uh your description of this word strong you said where you can't be swayed and i like how you did it you went uh, you said there's two if you look at the fist um uh, there's the physical you can be strong like someone that lift weights and stuff or you can be strong in the spirit or in your emotions, in, in your internal uh, being, uh, strong minded, meaning that you're not going to be swayed. You know that this word is the truth. You know, your Bible is the word of God. So nothing's got I'm going to stand strong in my faith. I'm going to be strong in my confidence. So, wow, these this is going to be really, really good. You know, another one I thought about uh, someone like they would call you like. You're Hercules. You're, you know, when you say Hercules, you know, that's uh, Hercules was strong. He could it, it lift up, you know, 
heavy stuff. So uh, he he was known for his strength, uh, even mm -hmm. like Samson. You know, I think about okay. Samson. He was known for his strength, his strongness, wasn't he? All right. So with that being said, Sister Sandy and audience, we know what Doris name mean. We know where it come from. Now, let me ask you this, Sandy. Do you know anyone famous or personally with the name Doris? Uh, personally, a lady named Doris out of Fremont used to take care of my two kids. Oh. And you got to really be a strong-willed person to take care of kids. <laughs> <laughs> and she was tough because when I was late, I got in trouble. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. What about... <laughs> Okay, what about somebody famous? Um, well, I used to watch Doris Day, so that's really aging me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, look at here. Well, me and you both have been aging good together, honey, because that's who Minister <laughs> Love picked, too. Uh, she was the first one that came to my mind because I grew up on Doris Day. She was a famous, um, not just an actress, actress, but she was a famous uh, singer, too. Yeah. She did a lot of musicals, and mm -hmm. she was strong. If you were to go back into the film industry back in her day when she was mm -hmm. coming out like in the 50s, the 60s, mm -hmm. she had to be strong as a woman to come up against this male-dominated film industry. You know, you mm -hmm. got to be strong and stick your uh, hold on to your values don't sell yourself out just to get the next role. Don't sleep with the producer. Don't sleep with the director just so you can be nominated for an Oscar. You're right. going to have to be strong in your inner convictions that this, what you're doing is what you want to do, but you want to do it the right way. All right, then. Praise God. All right, then, Sister Sandy. I love this part of the lesson, too. So everyone got your Bible, Sister Sandy and I are going to take you through some scriptures and two things we're going to be looking at, Sister Sandy and audience. First of all, who is the scripture talking about? And what, what is their strength? Why, how are they strong? Where are they getting this character of being strong? So strong is going to be the key word. Now, let me just say, some scriptures, Sandy and audience, you may not even see the word strong, but you're going to see in the text that there is some stability. There's some strength. There is something that's holding uh, this uh, these individuals together in strength. There's st strongness in the text. So with that being said, let's take a look at the very first uh, scripture. Sandy, we're going to go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 33, but I want you to read verse five and six, uh, Sister Sandy, five and six, please. Okay. The Lord is exalted for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Mm -hmm. This is Isaiah, the prophet, right? Mm -hmm. So, All right. So what I saw is um, it says strength of salvation. Mm -hmm. and, and that that is like, like Jesus is the cornerstone, right? As we learn mm -hmm. over the years. And uh, so the foundation is your salvation of Jesus Christ. Ooh, I like your, that. Your mind, right? I like so uh -huh. that. So that's Isaiah talking about Jesus Christ as our salvation. And, and then he, he's exalting God on so high, right? God is exalted. Mm -hmm. And that's that ultimate glory to exalt him, right? Mm -hmm. and, and he dwells high because Zion is Jerusalem. There you go. So, and then he says with judgment and righteousness. So in essence, he watches over his people and the Israelites that mm -hmm. out of the Jews out of Jerusalem. And he um, exalts them when they're good and he judges them when they're bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah. Lord, he does. And so, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then it's saying, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the time. So, your knowledge that you get by reading this word. And your wisdom, how you use this knowledge is a key mm -hmm. factor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, so it 
in this their time and even our time. We That's need right. to be, mm -hmm. be wise now in our knowledge because it's the same. Mm -hmm. People have not changed for thousands of years. And it says the strength of salvation and the fear, which is the respect mm -hmm. of the Lord is the treasure, his treasure. So it's so self-explanatory. I mean, what more can I say? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'll let you go ahead with it. But it's just powerful. It's powerful because it's the words of the Lord. I uh -huh. said, quoting these words. And this is for people to hear mm -hmm. today and back then. And for us to really acknowledge the, the strength and salvation, mm -hmm. because that's how we're going to make it through these times when you, you it's really going to be difficult for the unbelievers that are, mm -hmm. don't know jesus that don't have salvation because that's like that's the treasure right the treasure in our heart is the salvation of jesus christ and if we don't have that mm -hmm. whew, tough really yeah. tough mm -hmm. yeah even back then when they were refusing right they were worship, worshiping pagan idols mm -hmm. and gods same mm -hmm. things that people do today that are out there with their minds and their ears clothes and doing all this stuff that's useless worthless mm -hmm. that has no wisdom has no knowledge right. all it is is stuff <sighs> take it away minister love <laughs> I, I love it hey look i'm sitting here like i'm at the paramount theater right i'm watching a, a, a play it's good it's, <laughs> i love it i love it steady you brought out some really great points great nuggets and you know and right where we are like you were saying this is isaiah the what prophet and remember the time that Isaiah lived in, he lived around about 700 BC. So at this time, Babylon is not in the picture yet. It's Assyria. And so whenever, like you were saying, and now Israel is now over there messing with the Assyrians. They're, they're meddling with their gods, worshiping them. So when you leave the true God and you now deviate or get distracted, what do you think is going to happen to your spirit? You're going to get weak. See, that's what happens. You begin to get weak. You begin to fall for the devil, for the enemy of uh, deception and his lies and stuff. So now you don't left the true God. And now you think you're strong because you're with the enemy, because he's pumping you up, saying this and saying that. And you think, oh, yeah, I'm God. I'm strong. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. But in actuality, you are weakened. And I love how God told Isaiah, the prophet, to relay this to his own children. Take a look. Uh, and you brought this out in the very first uh, verse that we read. Notice what Isaiah says. He puts the Lord where? In the high position. He's exalted. He's sitting up high. He's dwelling on high. So God is in his rightful position. But look what he does to Zion. And I'm so glad you knew this, Sandy. That's Jerusalem or Israel, isn't it? So if Israel at this point, not if they were, at this point, they they messing with Assyrian. So they're weak now. They got no justice. They got no righteousness because they're full of wickedness. They're full of uh, unrighteousness. So now that the prophet is speaking to them <clears throat> and telling them what the Lord is going to do, look what the Lord is going to do now that they're in their weakened state. He's going to fill them up with what? Justice. See, when you ain't got no justice in the land, when your leader is not operating on truth and justice, what do you think you're getting? Injustice. The good people is being incarcerated and the bad people is still out on the street. That ain't no justice. You're weak. So God got to come in now and fill you up with what? Justice. Well, what else is going to fill them up with? Because they was weak. They didn't have it. They was weak. So he says, not only you need justice, you're going to need some righteousness. See, when you're involved with lying, manipulation, corruption, pagan worship, worshiping men, worshiping women, worshiping idols, whatever you worship him, you, you no longer have righteousness. You're dealing with now corruption and wickedness and evil dealings. And so now God said, I got to fill y'all up. I got to fill you up, Zion, so you can have justice and you can be righteous again. Because when he fills you up, guess what? You're going to be strong. You're going to get your strength back. Not 
And you're going to get your mind back right. You're going to think right. You're going to make the right decision. But he ain't done. Oh, I love this. He ain't finished. Take a look at the next text. Not only is he going to fill them up with justice and, and righteousness, but take a look at verse eight, uh, six. What did he say? And wisdom and knowledge. Wait a minute. Isn't that what we get at Black Who? Aren't we Bible lovers achieving Christ? What? Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. When you get this into your spirit, that builds you up, that strengthens you. You can go out and make other videos. You can go out and preach the gospel. You can go out and share this message with others so they can start uh, implementing and uh, replicating what you're also doing as well. Oh, but take a look at the text. He said, when you get all of this, this is going to be your stability. Didn't I use that word earlier? Stable. Mm -hmm. Stability is another a synonym for being strong. It can hold something. It's like um, uh, your table in your home. You can put something on that table and that table is strong enough. It's stable enough. It can hold pots, pans, dishes, a whole lot of stuff before it falls. And we need this. So you got to be filled up. When you was weak, you, you didn't have no stability. And you was out there serving the pagan God, you, you was weak. But now you got strength. And I love the, uh, the ending, and you talked about this too. So all of this strength is going to build up your what? Salvation. And what is salvation? Deliverance. So in other words, if Israel let God fill them up with all of this, they can come out of that uh, Assyrian domination. They can come out from under Assyria, who is now uh, uh, controlling them with these with the pagan worship. But the last one in this text, it says the fear of the Lord. And Sandy, you said it perfectly. This is a reverence. This is being in awe. This is worshiping God. This is his treasure. You get all of this, you can't help but to be what? Strong. In your righteous decisions, in your uh, in your justice uh, system, look at the world today. There's a whole lot of injustice. There's a whole lot of unrighteousness. People are not being filled up with the truth of the word of God. They're getting it twisted. They're being filled up with twisted people taking the scriptures out of out of context, making it want to be what they want it to be, so they can manipulate the masses of the people to keep them weak, yet they're going to be strong in their domination over them. Wow. That's a mouthful right sure there. Woo-wee. Y'all wow. know. God, that was good. Sandy, any thoughts on that before we go to the next text? No, it's the same as back 2,000 years ago, the Sadducees mm -hmm. and those people back then, they did the same thing. You know, they mm -hmm. just want to put the word out what they want to put the word out so that they can get all the glory. They don't want to give the Lord glory to the word of God, That's to right. God himself. Mm -hmm. Same thing today. Same, same thing. thing. Today. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Because Satan is in, Satan has them where he wants them to be. Sandy, right. let's take a look at the second text. This is so good. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Okay. Deuteronomy 11. And Sandy, I want you to read verse one, and then I want you to drop down to verse eight. One, then eight. All right. Okay. Therefore, thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then number eight. Therefore, shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day that you may be strong and go in and possess the land, whether ye go to, whether ye go to possess it. So this is back in the time of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is, um, uh, let's see. Where did I write? Let's see. I wrote the Israelites, yeah, they're in the wilderness. And mm -hmm. so they are being, told and so um it is Moses time right yeah so, that, uh -huh, Moses so, yeah yeah so Moses you know and Aaron they're telling these people mm -hmm. uh, what they need to be doing right mm -hmm. to, in order to um to make it through this time that they they shall love the Lord with all their heart and they should 
keep his statutes, his laws, his commandments, just like we're supposed to do today, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Same thing. And then it says, if you do all these things, then you will be strong. Mm. Right? You won't be weak. Like in the last um, one in Isaiah, right? The people were really weak because they were pagan gods. But if you follow the commandments, it's like, you know, you love, you love the Lord with all your heart. You love your neighbor as you would love thyself. The two mm -hmm. main ones and the rest, of the, the rest of the commandments. And if you keep these things, then you become like Jesus and you become really strong. And then you are like, like it says, we are live on the earth, but not from the earth, right? On this mm -hmm. planet. So in essence, we have separated ourselves. We've separated ourselves from the pagan gods, all the evil, all the uh, false prophets, the false pastors and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We're able to learn better. We're able to understand because Jesus, the Holy Spirit is inside to help us. And this gives us the ability to possess all this and get the promised land. The promised land for us is eternal life. For them, it was Canaan, right? Uh -huh. but, That's good. But then, That's but good. This time is for sal salvation through eternal life and the, uh, the thousand year millennium that we will be able and then God will protect us through this time of whatever <laughs> it's going to be and if we're caught up in the tribulation or whatever because we don't know and so it just protects us and God is there for us and and it, you, I don't know why people don't see that why people mm. ah, don't do it because I don't know because their eyes and ears are closed, like we just uh, yeah. studied in my state, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and until it. until they someone touches them, they hear something that triggers them, or or God whispers in their ear and says, "Hey, hey, I've been calling you all your life," <laughs> you know. So it's just a matter of the timing, right? Because our path has already been put there for us to to live, mm -hmm. and until that happens, you know, and and maybe you'll never know or accept jesus because it might be too late something could happen to you you know but mm -hmm. this is really really powerful stuff that the strength of the lord the strength of salvation the strength of his word the strength of honoring his commandments and laws it keeps you your foundation really level keeps you in the right perspective <laughs> of things you don't sway too much you know, you just know you stay firm in the word. You read the word every day. You stay firm in it. And God, because of that, God keeps showing us, like you say, nuggets, shows us new mm -hmm. layers of the onion being peeled back that we can see things we didn't see before. And it just blows my mind. <laughs> and, you know, it's so, it's exciting. It's it exciting. Mm -hmm. And and so life, life is a minute for excitement, but it's not forever excitement. It's not a mm. continuous assignment that when you wake up in the morning, you're happy, right? Mm. You're happy to be awake. You're happy to do what you can do today for the Lord. It's not like, oh gosh, I got to go to work. I got to deal with this. Mm. You know, it's a, I don't know. It's just something different that comes over us. And I just hope people will, will see this in our speaking today, in our yes. in our lesson. The strongness that God places in us when we serve him. It, um it's just, un, un, it's just unbelievable. <laughs> it <Okay>. is. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, that was good, Sandy. Awesome. Awesome. And it is unbelievable. I love that word that you chose there because sometimes, sometimes I'd be in such a awe of what I'm learning and receiving. I have to uh, put the Bible down, just walk away because it's just so awesome. And so let me just add to what you were just speaking of as well. And you are so correct. Here we are in the what? Wilderness. They ain't got to the promised land yet. Now, we know they done had their issues with uh, making that golden calf and God done, uh, gave them uh, manna and quail and stuff. And, you know, and they're waiting and waiting. Wow. And some people, they were so uh, they were so weak in their faith that they didn't make it to the promised land. They weren't strong enough because they couldn't resist or want to go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back into Egypt. They was weak in their, in, in, in their mind. And what I love about these scriptures is, is that uh, Moses is opening us. He's showing us uh, two things, basically. The spirit, you got to be strong in the spirit. And I like how you brought it out. The first thing he said, what? Love the Lord your God. That's the first thing. You got to love the Lord uh, our God. 
his statutes, his commandments. So from Genesis to Revelation, you need to love this. That's why we're Bible lovers. So you got to love this. But And why is that? Because it's going to make you what? Strong. It's going to strengthen your faith. It's going to strengthen your belief. It's going to uh, strengthen your conviction that this book really is the word of God. But then he goes on. He goes on down there in uh, verse eight. And he says that now you got to keep all of this. He said, it's just not enough for you to know it, but you got to keep it. And when you keep all of the commandments, the statutes and the judgments and all of that stuff, he says that all of this is going to make you what? Strong. And now that you got your mindset, you got your spirit uh, strong. You're like, we can do it. We can now go over into the promised land. We can capture, we can uh, defeat the Canaanites, the Philistines and all them other ites and stuff. Why? Because our spirit, our mind is strong. I'm convinced that God spoke to Moses. I'm convinced that we're going to get to the promised land. But everybody wasn't. Mm -hmm. Too many people are weak-minded. They listen to one person and then they, I don't believe God no more. This and that, that, that. weak. Well, you're not strong. You're not going to make it. And mm -hmm. Sandy, I like what you said, that here they was trying to get to the promised land and us, we're, our promised land is eternity. That was a good nugget. I like how you uh, put that. And if we're going to get to eternal life, you better be strong, but you better be strong in the word of God. It's not your physical that we need to be strong, so much, but it's the spirit. It's the spirit. Because when you're strong in the spirit, that'll get your physical up out that bed and you do some stuff you ain't never did before. You be like, what? Because right? you got your mind right. You got your heart right. right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I have a friend that's ready to serve the Lord, but she keeps putting it off. And I oh. told her, I said, look, when I started, I didn't know anything. I didn't, know any, I didn't hardly know the Bible that good. And then God told me to do uh, websites and all this stuff. I said, he will help you, you mm -hmm. know? And I said, when you're ready, I can help you, you know? Mm -hmm. guide you. And yeah. it, it's just like, you it's, you had to take a step, right? A baby step. And yeah. God will take it all the way. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's why I like the one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. That's why you can you can learn better when you got a mentor that's one on one with you. And for someone that has, yeah, you everybody got a lot of people got the Bible, but they 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 ain't got a clue what it's about, who's in it, what what is you know what is saying enough until you get you a mentor. And when you do that, oh my God, talk about getting strong. Look at you sending websites, uh, 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 social media now doing all of this wonderful stuff. Why? Because you you love the Lord. That's the key. You got to be a Bible lover. Amen. All right, then. Hey, listen, let's take a look at the next scripture. We got some more that we want to bring to everyone. Matter of fact, we're going to head down. Ooh, let's take a look at Proverbs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 14. And say now, I want you to read for us verse 26, please. All right, 1426. Mm -hmm. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it's, it's just like it is, because when you love the Lord, right? You really love the Lord like we do. He um he gives us confidence, strong confidence mm. that nothing is gonna stop us. No one is gonna stop us. Okay. Mm. And I mean, I get some terrible recourses from Satan's minions all the time in our social media. Mm. And if I was weak, if I was weak, I was bent. I was bold. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I get some real, really harsh stuff. <laughs> well. But I just say. I said, put it down, Sandra. Shut it down. <laughs> yeah. And, and and I said, and I start stomping the floor and I say, Satan, get under my feet. Yeah. I must be something right. Cause this stuff is raw. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly what this is saying, because he gives us a place of refuge. We know we're on the right path. We know we're working for the right boss, right? 
Mm -hmm. We're working for the God Almighty, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. You can't get any better than that. Mm -hmm. And so if you're fooling around in the world with men, men, women, whatever, working for Satan, sold your mm -hmm. soul, you're on the wrong path, people. You're really on the wrong path. And you just need to hear this so clear, please, mm -hmm. hear this. And this scripture is just telling you like it is. Yeah. You must love the Lord and you must not. You must not do the things you're doing mm -hmm. because he, he gives us refuge. He protects us. He does. Uh, as God is so amazing. You know, he tells me things before they even happen. And then when they happen, I'm walking down the street or in my car and I'm in tears because I said, God, you trust me to tell me the stuff. Mm. Who does that? What man calls you up or woman calls you up and warns you about something? No. Mm. Or that some, or you're going to receive a blessing. No. So come on people. Come on, give it a try. Give it a try. Amen. Ooh, I love it. I love it. This is good. This is so good. And so, Sandy, you are so correct. And I'm loving this scripture, too, because notice where we are. We're in the book of what? Proverbs. Who wrote this? Wisdom. Solomon. It's a oh, book man. of wisdom, isn't it? And did you notice the first part of that scripture? And I thought this was so cool because that last text, remember that scripture, the first scripture we had in Isaiah, where it says that mm -hmm. the fear of the Lord is his treasure. And look at this scripture. The very first thing that Solomon says is what? In the fear of the Lord is what? Strong wow. confidence. What is confidence? Faith. What is, uh, uh, so in the fear of the Lord, by us worshiping the Lord, reverencing the Lord, you know, honoring the Lord and everything, that's where your confidence come from. And it is strong. And uh, like you were saying, Sandy, you got people coming at you, the enemy coming at you, saying this and saying that. But see, by you reverencing the Lord, you're in the fear of the Lord. You got a strong confidence that no matter what the devil brings at me, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up because I got, I'm confident that this is the work of the Lord. I'm confident. I'm so strong in my conviction that the gates of hell cannot prevail against me. What? Look what he says. I love this. When you got a strong confidence in the Lord, and we ain't talking about strong confidence in man and in man's mm. system and, and, and man lies and corruption. We're talking about strong confidence in the Lord. And when you have that, look what the text says. And mm -hmm. his children, that's you and me today, we're going to have a place of what? Right. Refuge? Right. You mean shelter? Protection? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Because I'm convinced, I got a strong confidence that the Lord is going to take care of me. I, I believe it. And just like Moses did, Joshua did. Noah did, Peter, Paul, all of them, Jesus did. And the Doris is today, the Sandras, the Carols. You don't have to be a Doris for your name to be strong. In, any of us mm -hmm. can have this quality of being strong. So there it is, the mm -hmm. fear of the Lord. You better put your confidence in the Lord and not man and not man's system and, and let it work its way out. But you better be confident that the Lord is in control. And one thing about the Lord, he will put in who he wants and he will take out who he wants. So you can bicker, you can argue, you can send nasty messages and say this and send up crazy prayers. It ain't going to change God's mind. God already knew what God going to do. Mm -hmm. That's where I get my strong confidence in that I'm trusting him for every and anything outcome. Man, ooh, ooh, I'm sure my mama, I got to make sure she didn't name me Doris. I'm sure, did she really name me Carol or shall I be a Doris? <laughs> woo! Hey, listen, Sandy, we got another scripture. Matter of fact, we're going to hang out in Proverbs. I want you yeah. now just go over to 18. Take a look at Proverbs 18. Okay, 1810. Okay. 1810, take a look at that one. All right, it says the name of the Lord. Is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and they're safe and it's safe. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's very similar to what we just read in the other <laughs> proverb, right? I love good students. Uh, I, wait, Sandy. I love good students like this when you guys can pick up what the other scripture just said. You see how you pick that up? That's good. I just want to say, I love it. I love it. 
<laughs> yeah, because it's drawing confidence, and now it's showing it visually, like a tower, right? Yeah. Tower, God, it's a huge tower, and a strong tower, right? Mm -hmm. And so, in essence, the righteous, which could be you, you haven't yet made a decision, uh -huh. but it's me, your love, and other believers, we run, we run to the Lord. We run mm -hmm. to the Lord all the time. Every morning mm -hmm. we get up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And and he protects us, right? Yeah. And he keeps us safe. Mm -hmm. He guides us. He mm -hmm. tells us what to do. You know, if you don't know how to do something, he teaches you. It's just, wow. You know, you have your own mm -hmm. personal God with you, right? Because he takes time with each and every one of us. And he mm -hmm. wants to do the same for all of you, to give your life to him so that he would show you and guide you for your path, whatever that might be, so that you could help bring in the lost. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. This, and this is wisdom again. This is it, it, isn't it? wisdom. And yeah. it's, a really good, it's a really good chapter to read. If it's, mm -hmm. you Pick up that Bible and read it. <laughs> read, read the whole Proverbs. It's really powerful. It's really powerful. It'll make you strong, won't it, Sandy? It'll yeah. make you strong. Yes. Sandy, I'm so glad you was able to see the parallel uh, uh, in these two scriptures. And so the last scripture in Proverbs, it says, what in the fear of the Lord is what strong confidence. But did you notice this scripture said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And, and I thought about this, and I like your illustration, how the tower, you know, it's over us. I thought about San Francisco when I used to work in the financial district. And saying, I believe you worked in San Francisco too, didn't you? Okay. So you know, you know about financial districts. So when I worked in the city and I would, I would uh, look up, man, those buildings were just tall. They were towers. They, they towered over you, you know, tall protection. And now they have made these buildings now basically earth earthquake proof, proof? Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, okay. so when an earthquake do come you can now run into one of these buildings and you can pretty much be safe well that's what the scripture is saying here with god he's saying that it's his name you know when we call him the name of jesus and the father yahweh or uh, the holy ghost when we call on that on that name we can run into that notice what it said it's the righteous that's going to run into this tower. So if you're in San Francisco and you got a tower there and it's God, you can run into that building because it is what? Safe. It's been earthquake proof. Uh, it, uh, you're not going to uh, lose your life because you, you uh, are now in the name of the Lord. And that is a what? Strong tower. This is why we got to really... Uh, get out of the format where we've been conditioned to say, God, God, God. I, I want to say his name. I, I want to, I want to say his name, Yahweh, because mm -hmm. that's that, uh, 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 anybody can be a God. You, you can say God, God, but, uh, even the devils respond to that. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the devil respond to a God, but I want to be explicit. And I want to start saying his name out. You know, Yahshua for Jesus, Ruach HaKodesh for the Holy Ghost, Yahweh for the Lord. That's mm -hmm. his name. We did a study on the names of God one time, and yeah. we encouraged people to go back many and names, check it out. Right, Elohim, yeah. many names. Sure did, didn't we? Sure oh, did. Many, many names of the Lord, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So notice it said the righteous is going to run there. The unrighteous, remember remember that first scripture we talked about how God had to fill Zion up with righteous? So mm -hmm. the unrighteous people, they don't want to go to the truth. They don't want to go to the Lord. They love their devilishness. They love their lies. They love their corruption. They, don't, they ain't going in that building. They ain't going to the tower in God's name. They going to, to, to hell, to that uh, where they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. The, in wow. the last minute, they'll be screaming and running, but it'll be too late. It'll, it'll be, be too, too late. late. It'll, it'll be, too late. be too late. You got it. Cindy, yeah. we've been hanging out here in the Old Testament. So let's take right. everyone and let's drive down to the New Testament. And we're going to go over now to the book of Luke. Okay. okay. Let's take a book uh, here of Luke. All right. And Cindy, we're going to have you to, uh, matter of fact, 
chapter one, I'm going to have you read two scriptures. Hold on, sweetie. I want you to read, um, hold on here, Luke chapter one. I know we're going to do 80. Oh, God, I should have put that here. Oh, verse 13. Sandy, 13? read 13, and then All I want right, you to then. go over to 80. Okay. Yeah, 13 and then 80. All right. Okay. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and they shall call his name John. Okay. And um, so his wife is barren, right? So she can uh -huh. have a so, uh -huh. so to fear not. And then we go over to 80. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that reads. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. Ooh. Because you had you had two childs being born during this time. You had Elizabeth and Zechariah's son John, and then we had Joseph and Mary with the Holy Spirit and planted Jesus in her. And so, I think the uh, the last scriptures about Jesus, right? Or am I wrong? No, uh, oh, nope. I that. <laughs> no, it's still about it's still about John. Okay, there you go. Right. Okay, so it's still about John. <laughs> yep. And uh, so. And that's John the Baptist, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. So John Very the Baptist good. Uh, was really special. Mm -hmm. He was special. And he is the one that baptized Jesus. And he baptized yeah. a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so in essence, this is saying that he um, he grew up and he was waxed strong. It's like he became really strong, right? Mm -hmm. in, in his spirit. The spirit mm -hmm. of God was upon him. And his spirit was powerful inside so that he, uh, while he was walking through the, his time in the deserts and different places, uh -huh. that um, until he came to show himself in Israel, right? So he walked mm. through many places and did a lot of um, saving of people, being baptized in the water. And so he did a lot of great things, just like Jesus did. And um, mm. what else? So in mm -hmm. essence, this one is saying that he it was wax strong before it was like the um the tower and then the other one was the um where did I write down? Uh confidence. Strong confidence, yeah. Mm -hmm. so confidence tower and wax strong. Sort of like like this waxing you. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like uh, filling uh, you up with stuff to be to have the spirit in you so that through your walk. That, yeah. you were told that people because people were saying for a while that he was the messiah right so and when yeah. he said no i'm not fit to wear his sandals when right he, when he came uh jesus came to be baptized mm -hmm. so they go together they they're mm -hmm. really powerful stories mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. yeah very good sandy i'm i'm glad that you was able to bring in uh uh how john was able to uh baptize jesus see that's why john See, when John was born, because, you know, him and Jesus is cousins and they're only six right. months apart. So they're cousins. Right. Mm -hmm. And like you said, John was prophesied in the Old Testament as a forerunner to Jesus. And so now that mm -hmm. he's been born right. and his mother and father at a certain age, they had to let John go out into the what desert. Now, while he's out there in this desert, what did the scripture say? Uh, he became strong in what? The spirit. See, he's, he, we don't need to emphasize his physical strength because John mm -hmm. ate locusts and honey. That's all he ate right. was locusts and honey. And let me tell you, he was physically strong. If that's what all oh, you had to eat, he wasn't weak in the physical, but he had to build up his spirit. Why? Why did he need to be strong in the spirit? Because John now has to go and baptize Jesus. He's he's talking about the kingdom of God is here. And so his spirit had to be right because he's getting ready to, to baptize the son of God. 
Your spirit got to be strong. So when you when you up there baptizing Jesus, you can't be listening to them naysayers. You should, you can't do this, John. You're not qualified to do no baptism. See, John didn't listen to any of that because he was already what? Strong in the spirit. Mm -hmm. He was convinced. He had that strong confidence. I think you was uh, uh, mentioning just a second ago. He had that strong confidence. He had the name of the Lord. And so he was confident and strong in his spirit that he was going to baptize Jesus. He was strong in his spirit that he was going to go out and preach the, uh, the, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven is here. So John was strong, even though when they beheaded him, even when he was a martyr, he was still strong in the faith. Wow. He did right. not deny Jesus. He did not deny God. He did not deny the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he was strong in his spirit. Ooh, wait, what about us today? That's why you got to know, who am I spiritually? I know what I can do in the physical. I know I can be a doctor, a lawyer, you know, this or that. But who am I spiritually? Am I a righteous doctor? Am I a righteous lawyer? Am, uh, am I administering justice? Am I doing this patient or client the right way? Or am I scheming and scamming to see what I can get out of this client or patient? See? You better be strong right. in the spirit. Woo, this right. is so good. All right, Sandy, last scripture. Huh? We're going to take everyone over to uh, Romans chapter four. Let's take a look at that. Okay, let me see if I can find that. Romans chapter four. All right, here we go. Let me bring that one up. Funny. Uh-huh. Hold on, Sandy. I think, yeah, yeah. No, no. I want, uh, yeah, that one, but there's another one I want to add to that. Sandy, I want you to read uh, verse one right. and then go to 20. One, then 20. All right. What, we, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? And then 20. Mm -hmm. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Mm -hmm. And that is true because Abraham was the father of the nations and mm -hmm. Abraham was very, very uh, dedicated and loved the Lord so much. Mm -hmm. and, and even late in life, God blessed him and his wife, Sarah, with a child, mm -hmm. you know, because of the love that they had, that Abraham had. Okay. And it said that he didn't stagger to uh, not at the promise of God through unbelief. There was no unbelief in Abraham. Mm -hmm. there, there was none. But mm -hmm. he was his faith was so strong. And that's why yep. we hear about Abraham throughout the ages, um, throughout many uh, religions. Abraham is always spoken of. He is, you know, one of the top um, people in the Bible spoken like David. Mm -hmm. King Solomon and other people, Daniel, but Abraham, he was one of the, he was probably the first one after Mo, what, after Moses, right? So, or before Moses. Uh, before. Before. So yeah. yeah, he was the father of all the nations and he was the main man starting out this whole word of God. And so mm -hmm. um, it's just saying that he, he just had a, such a strong faith, right? Yeah. The faith, because that's it. You have to have a strong faith. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna go through some trials and tribulations. Just, Satan is gonna knock things against you, your children, your grandchildren, mm -hmm. your friends, your job, your health, your life, finances. He's gonna slam you any way he mm -hmm. can. And if your faith is weak, you will fall. That's right. You you will fall. That's right. And that's what this lesson is today: to be strong mm -hmm. okay? in all facets, faith, mm -hmm. spirit everything integrity mm -hmm. so you got to have it you got to have it and and, and it, it, your life will even though you'll have hard times sometimes you can make it mm -hmm. you, you will make it through you will make it through right. um love and i can attest uh, we have had stuff slammed at us through our life so mm -hmm. uh we're still kicking we're still preaching the word we're That's still right. talking about Jesus. we're still trying to encourage people to be saved mm -hmm. and it's not until my last breath, till I'm gone. That's right. 
That's right. Ooh, that's good, Sandy. Thank, thank you, thank you for getting a little plug out there for us. Amen. Let people know, <laughs> hey, we strong. We we're determined. We're we're uh uh we have accepted this work from the Lord to the end. To the day, to the day I drop dead, that's when I stop preaching and teaching this gospel. Sandy, let me just add to what you were saying. And you got everything correct there with Abraham. What I love about this scripture too, because remember God gave Abraham a promise. He said, Abraham, you're going to have a child and it's going to be the promised seed, blah, blah, blah. We know the story. Well, guess what? He didn't get that child for like 20 some years. I think it was like 25 years. He had to wait. So during that whole 25 years that he waited year after year, when am I going to have the baby? When is Sarah going to get pregnant? I just imagine him and Sarah talking about it. But even through all those 25 years, he did not waver. He did mm -hmm. not say, you know, Sarah, it ain't happening. We've been waiting five years. It just ain't, no, <laughs> ain't going to happen. You know, but he did not stagger. He did not give up. He, he believed God. And it strengthened him. That was his strength, was his faith. Because when you hear from God, when God tells you something, like God spoke to me on November 15, 2006, and told me to teach this word, I was, I was sure God spoke to me. And look at, look at us today, still teaching the word of God. I did not waver. I did not stagger because I know. I wrote it down. I know he spoke to me. And the same thing with you, Sandy, when you said that the Holy Ghost spoke to you to start the websites and stuff when you and I first got together. You haven't wavered since. I haven't wavered since. We still together. And matter of fact, it's even better. We done got better at this. Why? Because of our what? Faith. And it's a strong faith. Many people have came in and out. And now they back into the world, you know, and ain't giving hoots about God, you know. And so they got weak. They, they You get weak when you detach yourself from the vine. The Bible is like the vine. We're the branch. If I cut myself off from the vine, I'm not going to produce nothing. I ain't going to, mm -hmm. uh, uh, at least not for God. Now I might produce some for the devil, but I won't be producing nothing for the Lord. So we got to be strong in our what? Faith. And get this, Sandy, I love this. When we are so strong in our faith, because we know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence, evidence of things not yet seen. You ain't even got it yet, but God done promised you, but you can still give him glory. And that what the text says, giving glory to who? God. I ain't got the house yet that he promised me, but I'm not going to waver. I'm not going to stagger. I know it's coming. I know relationships is going to be restored. Kids are coming back. Grandkids coming back. Whatever, you know, finances, health. I'm not going to waver because we're going to get it what? Back. Because we're giving God the glory. Ooh, right. Man, hey, listen, we're going to end right there, but I love this part of the lesson. Audience, we hope you do too. Sandy, I just love to get your insight. What did you learn? on this name, Doris, today, meaning strong? Well, we looked at it in all facets, right? We looked at mm -hmm. it in confidence, power, spirit, <laughs> okay, Abraham's faith. So mm -hmm. God gives us, in all facets of our life, strength, right? Our faith, our trust, everything. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and we're, we can um, have refuge, in him mm -hmm. protection and the word strong you know you like people today you they look at bodybuilders and all these guys are buffed <laughs> with their packs and everything mm -hmm. it's superficial it's just physical and what happens when you get you get old you get saggy right you just mm -hmm. don't keep it. you don't keep it but with god the strength gets bigger <laughs> it gets stronger um even when you get older, you got energy, you got mm -hmm. energized, right? You can mm -hmm. do things and you look younger, you know, you just, it just amazes me mm -hmm. how, you know, when I looked at myself before the Lord and now at myself now and the energy and <sighs> the knowledge and, and the abilities and things, I just shake my head. I can't, mm -hmm. believe, it. I can't believe it, you know? So it's, yeah, it's just, it's priceless. It's, it's, it, you just can't say enough about it. And God just gives us strength, period. Yeah, that's it. That's where it comes from. 
Amen. Yeah. God bless you, Sister Sandy. Thank you for the conclusion or summary of what you learned uh, on this lesson today, talking about Doris. And audience, we pray that you would step back and reflect on the scriptures that we went through and see where you can go get the strength that you need. If you're weak right now, if you're in a uh, in a, a situation where you got to make decisions and you're weak, you don't know what to do, just go to God. He's the strong tower. He's where your faith and confidence is. And he will give you the right answer in the right way to go. All right, then, everyone. Hey, listen, we're not going to leave you without giving a shout out to the great work that Sister Sandy uh, does over on her website. Sandy, tell them about the website that you have. Great work that you're doing. Uh, SourceOutreachMinistries.com. We now have Source News. And we have Overcoming the Flesh series uh, to help you overcome the uh your flesh and the worldly ways and give you strength when you give your life to Jesus. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's really a good series. It really is. Thank you, Sister Sandy. It is great. We encourage everyone to to watch uh those great teachings on that website as well. So here we are. Thank you all for being with us here at LakuMinistries.com, where we really are Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Our weekly phone Bible study ministry. We pray that, pray that you will join us next week because next week is our last lesson for the year. We only do 42 lessons. So we pray that you have been with us from one all the way to next week. All right, then with that being said, I will close us out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, thank you for bringing Sister Sandy and the audience are here with me today, Father God, with you in the spiritual classroom, where once again, you have opened up our eyes, our ears, our hearts, our minds, and our spirits, that we might be feel with uh, your righteousness, your justice, and your knowledge, and your wisdom, and everything, the fear of you, all of that is making us what? Strong. So we thank you. As Sister Sandy said before, we may be up in age. We some older little chickens now, but we got energy and we love it. So we look forward to being with you uh, next week, Lord, and uh, praying for the world, praying for uh, all of the nations and the leaders that they will make the right decisions as the people have uh, urgent needs in their lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Miss Sandy. All right, darling. Love you. God bless you and your family. And I look forward to seeing you this time next week. God bless and take care. God bless. God bless. Goodbye.